Watch you guys, got another video here for you on how to set up MSI after burner on screen display. Now a few of you have mentioned that you wouldn't mind knowing how to do this and it's pretty straightforward. So first off, let's go ahead over to MSI and download uh, their version of Afterburner from here. So get the latest version and uh, you can download it on their website here. I'll leave the link in the video description. Click on open and uh, you can see here we've got the latest version so we're just going to run this one and uh, once we've got this uh, running we're going to install it say yes to the user account control and then go through the installation process is pretty painless so just go through here next leave these both ticked even Reva Tuna statistic server you need to make sure that is installed as well for it to work correctly and then we can go ahead and click on install and this will uh, install MSI Afterburner. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, install Reva Tuna Statistic Server. This is important because if you don't install this, it's not going to work and you're not going to get that on screen display. So just let that go through its installation process. It does take a bit of time. I've speeded this up for you. And there we go. So once we've done that, we've got MSI Afterburner open. And uh, from here, we want to go to the settings. Uh, button and you'll be able to see that it's that little cog uh, underneath here so click on this this will open up the MSI afterburner properties inside here we can start to set up our on-screen display to what we want so first off we're going to go to uh, the GPU temperature show in on-screen display and also override group name that's what we're going to do here now we're going to give it a name and uh, you can put in here whatever you like. Uh, I'm just going to put in here GTX uh, 1050 Ti. And uh, depending on what card you've got, that's the card that's in this test rig here. So I'm just going to be putting that in there. And you can see up the top on the properties area, we do have now GPU temperature in on-screen display, OSD. That means it's going to display on our screen. So you can call these whatever you like. So make sure you've got the tick in uh, showing on screen display. Give it your name. I'm going to copy this one now because I'm going to go GPU usage. Override group name and then paste that into here as well. Make sure you put the tick in showing on screen display and you're pretty much good to go. So we're going to go ahead and put memory usage inside here. And this is your VRAM. So make sure we put showing on screen display. Override group name. It says mem but I'm just going to change this to VRAM because that's what it is. So just going to click on this one and uh, we're going to now move on to the next one. So let's move down to core clock. You can see core clock here. Now, depending on what you want to set yours up to display on the screen, you just go through the process here and uh, put these into place exactly like this. So I'm going to put here core clock. I'm going to call this GPU core clock. You can call it whatever you like, uh, but that's what I'm going to be calling it. And of course, we also have the mem clock, or which is your memory clock. So we're going to uh, do this one as well. So you can see here, all we need to do is uh, just click on uh, memory clock and you're getting the sort of idea now. Show on screen display, override group name, and you can call this whatever you like. So it's, it's just mem there, but we want something a bit different so we're going to call this GPU uh, mem clock and that will mean that we've now got the core clock and the memory clock on there so we can now visually see it on the screen and it's useful for people that are watching uh, the benchmark so they know exactly uh, what is being displayed on there. So next up we're going to move on to the uh, CPU so I'm going to do CPU temperature here so this will just give us a uh, an overall idea of the CPU temperature show on screen display and inside here in our override group name I'm going to put inside here the model number of CPU so in this old machine it's an i5 3550p and I'm going to put that inside there and that will just display our CPU uh, temperature uh, for that chip so people will know exactly what chip is being displayed on the screen and they will know what the temperature of that chip is when playing that particular type of game or benchmarking that particular type of game. So you just change this to whatever you like. 
So I'm just going to copy this one and then move up to the uh, next one, which is the CPU usage. Now I'm going to come down to the main CPU usage and paste that in there as well and do the on-screen display and also override group name. Okay, so we're getting pretty good now. So all I need to do now is uh, some uh, frames per second. And again, you can see uh, CPU power, RAM usage, all that sort of good stuff inside here. You've got CPU clock. You just put in whatever you like. So let me just quickly do the CPU clock here. And I'm just going to put in here CPU clock because that's exactly what it is. And we'll just display that exactly as it is here. And also RAM usage, which is the RAM usage for the system. So what I'm going to do here is leave that uh, as is. I'm not going to touch that. Just put on screen display and also override group name. Now the frame rate you can see here is grayed out. You just click on the little tick here and this will give us our frame rates. And I'm just going to show on screen display and override uh, group name. And that is pretty much uh, done there. So all I need to do now is uh, click OK and uh, that will then start to display all the ones we've set up on our screen. Now, of course, you can display whatever you like and you can use whatever names you like as well. So I'm going to click OK here. Now we need to uh, set up our uh, Reva Tuner. So what I'm going to do here is come down to the bottom right. You should see Reva Tuner down here. Click on this one and it will open up the Reva Tuner app here. So now we need to change this. Now you could just leave it as it is if you want to and leave it as stock colors and all that sort of stuff. But if you want to uh, jazz it up a little bit, you can do. And what we're going to do here is come over to Raster 3D and you can choose a font that you want to display on the screen. Now you want a nice clear font so you can see exactly what it is. And uh, this one works for me pretty well, modern. And you can do bold. And you can do it around about seven, size seven, something like that. Click OK. And uh, again, you can see it's nice and clear and easy to read on the screen. Now from here, we need to change the color and you can change the color to each individual part if you want to, or you can just change the whole color to white. And that's what I'm going to use. And now we need to change uh, the on-screen display. And I'm just going to move this up a little teeny bit so it's a little bit bigger. So it displays it a bit bigger. That'll be just right there. And now we need to put on the on-screen uh, display fill, which I've just uh, turned on there. So just make sure we enable that. And now we can do the spacing, which will be uh, 2020. So let's go ahead and change this to 20 and 20. This just brings it away from the corner a little bit. And we're pretty much good to go. So make sure you've got the radio button on for on-screen display fill and that'll put a nice little uh, fill color on the background of it so it sticks out a little bit for you. You don't have to have that on but it just makes it look a little bit better on the screen uh, when you're looking at it. So all we need to do here now is take a look and see what it looks like. So I'll quickly fire up a game here just to show you uh, the, what it looks like on the screen. You should have seen this before when I did some benchmarks for this uh, little machine here. But just close this off and uh, we can now have a look. And there we go. Now, again, you can add whatever you like in here. You can add more or less. It's entirely up to you. But as you can see, it looks pretty clear. We've got the graphics card, the temperature there, also the VRAM, uh, the GPU clock, and also the GPU mem clock. You can put ever whatever you like in there. But that's what I've got on mine. Anyway, I think that's about it for this video. I hope this one helps you out. My name is Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Have a great weekend, guys, and I shall see you again for another video real soon. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the big red subscribe button on my YouTube channel and hit the bell notification button next to that to be notified when we upload new videos.